We are farmers. Yeah, my name is Bill Robinson and uh, I'm an automobile designer and uh, also a transportation design teacher at the College for Creative Studies for 22 years. We were playing ball one time when we were about 10 years old. Uh, we loved baseball. We didn't want to quit to even go to dinner. Uh, but m my neighbor who was a designer at GM brought home a cord and that was such an exciting car that we quit the game and went over to look at the car. And I read several books on industrial design and I said, I'm capable of doing that. The, there was a school in Detroit called Cass Technical High School with an industrial design curriculum. So I transferred from Denby High School to Cass Technical High School. Yeah, even during class when we were having subjects, uh, I would be sketching cars in, in my book. It was, a, it was a thing I just loved to do. Uh -huh. Well, because I had been trained in industrial design, I had an industrial design portfolio. And uh, I went to one of the industrial designers and I explained to them my philosophy uh, was I didn't have enough money to go to uh, an art school or a design school and I was going to work for a couple of years and earn enough and then go to school. They looked over the portfolio. They said, this is the best portfolio we've ever seen. You don't have to go to school. They, they wanted to hire me. But I did find a uh, industrial designer who was also an automotive designer. That was Carl Reynolds Jr. And so I learned a lot from him uh, doing in, uh, industrial design. But product designers were being paid $100,000 a year, this was in 1945, just to be a consultant. And I said, if I'm going to have my own industrial design studio, I want to be able to get one of those. But I said, I'm going to have to learn how to design cars. And so I decided that I would go to a car company and work for a few years. Kaiser Fraser was newly organized, and I thought that would be a good place to go. That was 1948. At that time, I was only a tool uh, of the manager. The manager designed everything, and we were there to illustrate his designs, which I was not satisfied with at all. During our lunch hour, our break, we would make designs so that we would have a chance. But the problem is, by the time the shows came, he would put all of our drawings in, in, a, in the drawer so that the company wouldn't see it. And I was a very brash young man. I pulled out all of my drawings so they could see them. And when they accepted one of my designs, the manager was very upset, you know, over that. But that's the way it operated at that time. Uh, no matter what you did, uh, the, the person you were working for would get the credit. The Chrysler was approached by uh, K.T. Keller, uh, it was 1953, and there was a Corvette show car. And he wanted to make sure that Plymouth had something equal to that. Every designer looks forward to doing a concept car because you don't have any limitations, or very few limitations on it. But I was so surprised that Al assigned me to do it, you know. And in the beginning, I had quite a bit of interest in it. But then the design control got out of my hands and it looked, didn't look as the way I wanted it to look. And so when Virgil Exner, when he saw it, he wanted to take credit for it. And I said, yes, you can take credit for it. Because <laughs> I didn't think that much of it at the time. The, the, the strongest challenge is identity. Back in the early 20th century, Packard understood that if you're having a luxury car, people should be able to identify it immediately. Every car they would do would have that identity. So if you were a doctor or 
uh, personality. They knew that you had a Packard. Everyone, even five-year-old kids, could recognize a Packard. The, the hoods were shaped like this. Then they had a little step in it and then down. And uh, that, that shape uh, evolved from the radiator. And Packard became so famous for it that Buick actually copied it one year. <laughs> At the time I did it, uh, and, and that was the drawing over there, uh, I didn't know what happened to it until I was browsing online. Pinterest is a, a website that has all those car pictures on. And, and I saw a picture of the car and I said, that looks like my design, you know. So I didn't know that Packard had actually used the design until just a few years ago. Yeah, there's one thing you have to understand. For every car that's designed, there might be a hundred sketches. And for you to have the one sketch that's the winner is really an accomplishment. We were so uh, isolated within, within the Briggs Corporation, we were isolated. We had our own hallway, uh, we had our own rooms, and no one could get in. Uh, Walter O. Briggs was about the only person they would permit uh, into the studio. Security is so great uh, that your friends may be in another studio and they will not allow you into another studio and so you would have to meet your friend at lunch or in the hallway or the receptionist's office. And I can understand that sense of security because if you leave the corporation, the only information you can take with you is what you know about what's going on in your studio and the, there was a spy system that was going on at that time and we had a professional spy who would go and take pictures at Ford and General Motors and when he was at Ford he would rent an Oldsmobile so if he got caught they wouldn't know who he was. <laughs> Each company had their own systems and I didn't know about Ford's system until I was designing a concept car and they decided not to do the concept. So I just rolled up the drawing and threw it in the trash. And I got a call from Ford a week later. They said, hey, Bill, we got your drawing over here at Ford. They were buying our trash. Chrysler uh, bought Briggs. They said, destroy all Packard drawings. And so we had to make a pile in the middle of the room, probably a ton of drawings. And so I retrieved uh, as many of my drawings as I could. I retrieved 13 Packards and the uh, uh, Plymouth Belmont, I did eight drawings. I gave those to the Chrysler Museum. Most designers, uh, the drawings belong to, to the corporation that you're working for. And if you take them home, you're stealing them. And so some designers would take them and roll them up and put them under their uh, coat and things like that. And what I tried to do was get a pass. They would allow you to take old drawings uh, home, but if there were drawings of the model that's coming out, that was, they wouldn't allow you to take the current drawings. You create so many drawings that you run out of storage space uh, and you have no place to put it. So th at that time, they tell you either, you know, get rid of the drawings or save some if you want to because th they needed storage space. Some of them belong in, a, in, in an art museum. And of course, Julie and uh, Robert Edwards were doing their best. To, they had various shows around. The first one they had was at Lawrence Tech. They had it at the Detroit Athletic Association. Uh, they had one at the Scarab Club. And there's a big show coming up this year uh, at the Detroit Institute of Arts where they will have real cars plus drawings. I was so pleased one time when we had a guest speaker uh, at uh, uh, Wayne State, and uh, we had some of the fine artists uh, uh, at that same lecture. And so some of the fine artists asked, what do you think is the finest sculpture that's available today? And he said, the automobile. And they did not like that, you see. <laughs>